us pray. Heavenly Father, we are reminded by your word that you are truth. We praise you for truth. We need your truth. Your truth teaches us how to live. Your truth shows us that you live. Your truth leads us to other people who need you. And Father, we want to ask your forgiveness for times when we have not helped your truth. When we've ignored it or shied away from it. But it's a little easier to give up a piece of your truth than to face our family, our friends, the world who have denied what is true. Forgive us for those times. Give us courage to stand for your truth as Jesus told us to stand for your truth. He prayed, I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they don't belong to the world. Jesus said, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. Lord, let us not belong to this world anymore. But instead, make us holy. Holy by your truth. Teach us that your word is truth. We need that truth today, Lord. We need the truth of who you are. We need that to combat this world that wants us to tell us there is no truth. But we know everything is not subjective. You are powerful. You have created us to be a certain way and to be a certain people, and we need to be that. Teach us your truth today, Lord. Whether in a Sunday school class or the message this morning or from the words that were sung, teach us your truth throughout this week as we open your word and make it a part of our lives and we feast on that word of truth. For those who are sick and are going through problems, may they turn to your truth, your word, which would see them through. We pray for Alexi this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would touch her, that you would heal her, Lord. Heal her from this, this problem in her spine and her brain, and then, Father, you would remove this from her. We pray for Bruce that as he goes through the chemotherapy, that you would help him to testify to your greatness, to your wonder, to your truth, to the people that are around him, to those who are caring for him. May your spirit speak to him of the truth even as he goes through these times. For many others who are going through physical problems, Father, we pray that they would turn to you, that they would call the elders or the church to heal them, to bring ointment and to heal them, as your word says. Those who are going through family problems and personal spiritual problems. Lord, may they turn to your word instead of to the latest fad and the latest thing. And see the truth of your word. And, and Lord, we don't like this word much, but submit to it. May we submit to your truth this morning. And as we submit to your truth, we find power. Oh, we find your power. We thank you for your word, for Holy Spirit who leads us in truth. In Jesus' name.
What a privilege, what a privilege to be here today. Can you, uh, let's see, testing one, two, three. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. All right, I need to hear myself up here. If I can't hear myself, I preach real long. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's good, yeah. Many of you know that today is Pastor Andy's birthday. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. We're going to say, because he'll be watching this later on. Is this, is this live? Is it live? Yeah. Okay. okay, anyway, we need to say, uh, Happy birthday, Pastor Andy. We love you. Ready? Here we go. Happy birthday, Pastor Andy. We love you. <laughs> he asked me to do that. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh. It is a privilege to be here. Joy and I were here a few months ago, and we are glad to be back to this happy crowd, these people who love the Lord Jesus. And uh, a lot of things have happened to bring us here. The last 48 hours, a lot of stuff has happened. We were in southern Michigan uh, Friday night, and about oh, 9 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, uh, I hit a deer head on. A totally full-grown, mature deer. He stood that high above my, my, uh, my uh, what's it called? In front of the car, the bumper, yeah. He stood high, and I hit him, and uh, I never saw him uh, again. And I kept going, and uh, something was dragging, so I stopped. And my front bumper, the whole front of the car was demolished. So I had to get the bumper up, tie it up, try to go, and then they all the so exciting. So I pulled into the first right away I saw. I said, hello, my new best friend. No, I didn't. We told the whole situation. But anyway, we got to bed at 3 a.m. on that night. That was great. This morning, looking forward to coming and seeing you. Now, I want you to know something. This is how I look when I do my hair and my dress with no electricity. Okay. <laughs> No electricity this morning. Boy, it was a wonderful moment. But uh, it was a good time. It's good to be with you. Some of you uh, bought my devotional book, which was just off the press when I was here with you before, entitled uh, You've Got His Word on It. How many of you have my book? Let me see. Oh, yeah, a hundred. I'm so glad you have. I hope that it's a blessing to you. I've got them available out here as well. You can get there after the service if you want one. It makes a great gift. And a lot of you are trying to shop for Christmas. This would be a good time. And listen, today... We're going to be uh, looking at Genesis 37 to 50. It's 14 chapters in the Bible. It's going to take us a while to read them all. So we're not going to read them all. <laughs> but what you can do is, you know, these paragraphs in the Bible, when they have titles, those are called pericopes. A pericope. So you can kind of follow the pericope. Pericopes, these, these titles on the way as I go through these 14 chapters. Father, I thank you for these good people. Thank you for the privilege of being here to preach your, your holy word. And, and we need your word to come alive to our heart. It's great to read scripture. It's great to hear sermons. But we want to hear your voice deep in our spirit, in our souls, in our very lives. Thank you for every person here. We pray these things in the strong name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Mike Davison was a tremendous layman. I'd say he was about 45 years old, 50, kind of in his prime. And uh, he was a gentleman. He was godly. He was filled with the Spirit. He was so kind. I mean, he was just one of those precious kind of people that any pastor would love to have in his church or on his board. And uh, he developed a strange thing. It was called uh, multiple systems atrophy. Anybody ever heard of that? Nobody has heard of that. Well, a couple of you have. Multiple systems atrophy. What it means is his whole body was shutting down. This guy who was vibrant, strong, kind of a million dollar smile and attitude and spirit. A great businessman. He was dying and he asked, his wife and him asked Joy and I to come to his bedroom. We came to his bedroom we knew that he would soon be gone. And he said, I want you to sing a song that I've heard you and Joy sing before. Is entitled, In the Midst of It All. And so we sat there, or we stood there, with him in bed, dying, and we sang, In the midst of it all, in the midst of it all, 
I have found hope that will never let me fall. Jesus heard my call and by me stood tall. And in Him I stand complete in the midst of it all. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Mike was in the middle of something. He's in heaven now. But he praised God. He saw God in the midst of it all. Whatever your situation, we all come up with all kinds of stuff. God can make a difference. My message, message title is, God really does make a difference. Do we believe that? Amen. Yes, we do. Let's say it together. God, say it. God really does make a difference. Turn to your neighbor. Tell him. God really does make a difference. Tell him right there. God yeah. really does make a difference. I'm going to give you three points today in rapid fire. Number one, you are where you are on purpose. Okay? Sometimes it seems like stuff's happening for no rhyme or reason. But I'm saying to you, you are where you are on purpose. Now, Genesis 37 and 50 gives us this tremendous story about the man Joseph. You remember his dad was Jacob. Jacob had all these sons. And Jacob loved Joseph so much so that he gave him this special coat. They call it a coat of many colors. It was like a robe. It was almost like a royal thing. And he gave it to his son. Well, the other brothers kind of wonder what in the world's going on. And uh, matter of fact, the, the brothers were out working in the fields of tending the, the flocks. And uh, Joseph was sent by his father to go there and see how they're doing. But Joseph had told them that he'd had some dreams. How many of you had a dream that you wanted to meant something? Anybody? Yeah, well, he had some dreams. And his dreams, a couple of them, were saying, one of these days, all my brothers and even my father is going to bow down to me. Oh, this ticked the brothers off. They didn't like that at all. So they went to get rid of him. So he came where they were tending the, the flock. And they said, let's just kill him right here. No, they said, listen, let's, 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 there's, there's, there's this pit in the ground, this hole. Let's throw him in there. We've got to get him out of our lives. And then one of them said, well, that's not a good thing. And there was a caravan of merchants on their way to Egypt. And he said, well, aren't we just sell him as a slave? We'll make some money. And they said, that's a good idea. So they sold him as a slave. They took his coat of many colors. They dipped it in blood, showed it to Jacob, and said, Joseph's been killed. Can you imagine anything more vile than such a thing that, that this inconsiderate to the, their, their father, little Lord, would say, Joseph? Well, Joseph was struggling. So here he is, a slave. He comes into Egypt, and there's a man who takes Joseph in, and his name is Potiphar. He is a leader in that area, a military leader, Potiphar. Is, is that some kind of name? I want to tell you something. Joy and I decided a long time ago, if the Lord ever gave us another son, Potiphar would not be his name. <laughs> guess what they call him for short? Potty, Potty, I guess whatever it is anyway. But Potiphar was this leader. And he was impressed with Joseph. He, he set him up entire, in charge of his entire household. And Joseph, man, I mean, he was a leader among leaders. Well, Potiphar was on the road a lot, running around doing stuff. And Potiphar's wife became kind of agitated. She thought, this Joseph guy, he looks like a good-looking guy. And she tried to, to get him to, to have relations with her. She tried to seduce him. And he continually rejected her overtures. You remember the story, how that the, she was approaching him again one day. And he said, no, I can't. I'm not going to do this. And she grabbed his coat or his cloak, and he took off. So she used that cloak to say, hey, he's trying to force himself upon me. She told the servants, and Potiphar found out about it, and Joseph was put in jail. Not looking very good for Joseph. Now he's in jail. While he's there, he gets a reputation. He has a reputation of interpreting dreams. And uh, as a matter of fact, when he was in jail, one of the guys that got out communicated with the Pharaoh, who had been having some terrible dreams. Hey, listen, there's a guy in jail. Joseph, he knows how to interpret dreams. Well, go get him. Others couldn't help him. Others who tried to interpret it, they couldn't do anything. So they got Joseph, and Joseph told the people, Hey, listen, there's going to be seven years of plenty of food and crops and seven years of famine. And, and, and the, 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 the Pharaoh was so impressed. He said, Joseph, up in charge of his entire household. I mean, it was something. It was amazing. God worked in Joseph's life when it looked like everything was going crazy. The famine now, now after, now after the first seven years of good stuff, the famine reaches Joseph's family many miles away. 
his family, his father. And they began to come because they hear there's, there's grain over there in Egypt. There's food, so we're going to go over there. And the story is that the family is reunited and Joseph has a forgiving spirit to them all. And they do all basically bow down to him just like his dream said. But it looked terrible. I want you to hear what Joseph said in Genesis 45, verse 8. Genesis 45, verse 8. Good to see all these Bibles here today. Anybody bring a cheetah Bible? You know, the devices. Anybody bring that? Okay, there you go. Those will work too, though. Those will work. Genesis 45, 8. Listen to what he says. It was not you who sent me here, but God. It didn't look like it was God, did it? He said, it was not you who sent me here, but God. Joseph was where God wanted him. It looked bad, but it turned out for good. I wonder if you're going through something that doesn't feel very good right now. I'm telling you, God's going to work in it for good. If you'll give him time. If you trust him. You know what I find? I find if I give God time, he always does better than I ask. Amen? I'll do my own amen. You just be quiet. It's okay. I'll just do, I'll just do them all. He'll do better than we ask. Amen. I remember Joe and I were working at a camp meeting years ago. I was working with the teens. I was working with the baseball team. We were having a great time. And I was out in left field. And the a ball that was hit that went over the shortstop's head and would have been short for most left fielders. But I had my Nikes on that day. I went through the air like an arrow. And I got to that ball, and I, I didn't catch it. It just, it just tipped the end of my glove. But the momentum was carrying my 125 pounds forward, and I, and, and I rolled. And, and, and I, when I was starting to roll, I heard this tremendous applause. And uh, when I rolled, I got up, and I looked around, and nobody was clapping. But I heard this applause. What I was hearing was, we have a clavicle. It goes from here to here. I had what is known as a curious clavicle. Mine decided to come up for a look-see. A clavicle came right out. Oh, I say it was a precious moment. Now, here I am, ministering to these teens, so glad to be there, and they take me to the hospital, I'm going to have to have surgery. This didn't feel very good. It didn't look very good. So while I was there, they worked on me. And uh, while I was there, I had a chance to witness to Tom and his wife, who were in the hospital as well. It was a wonderful opportunity to share Jesus Christ with them. So I had a, an appreciation for them. But I also had an appreciation for my wife. She had to help me do lots of things. And I already appreciated her, but it went to another level. And you know what? I had, I had a new, and I still have, a new appreciation for my arm. When's the last time you thank God for your arm? I think of it as, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for, for the privilege of having an arm that, that works. You, you know, I, God worked in it for good. At the time, it seemed like there was no way for it to improve. They had me in a sling. And uh, during that summer, I led a choir in another camp meeting. You should have seen me leading the choir. I mean, it was really <laughs> big stuff. And, you know, when you keep your arm in a sling long enough, your elbow starts to fuse together. So I did that. And so they told me I had to do therapy. And so I get, you know, 10%, 20, 25%, 35, 50%, 150%. I mean, it, was just, it, it came back. It came back. My point is this. God took a broken clavicle and he did something good. I don't know what's broken in your life, but I'm telling you this. You are where you are on purpose. If you're a Christian, God is in your problem, and you're going to be a better person when it's over than you were before it started. Somebody say amen. amen. If you're a Christian, he's in your problem, and you're going to be a better person when it's over than you were before it started. Praise the Lord. But listen to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 12. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Now we see but a poor reflection. But one day we will see face to face. Won't that be something? Face to face. Number one, you are where you are on purpose. Number two, you can depend on God to guide you. You can depend on God to guide you. 
In uh, Genesis 48, 21, Jacob is now speaking. And so they've had this reconciliation and Jacob's coming down to the end of his life. And listen to what he says in Genesis 48, 21. I am about to die. He's speaking to Joseph, speaking to all of them. I am about to die, but God will be with you. <laughs> is that good or what? I'm going to be leaving, but God will be with you. Think about it in a minute, for a moment. Moses, he's crossing the Red Sea. Can you imagine all of these Israelites are complaining behind them? You brought us out here to die. We could have had good food over there in Egypt. And now you've got us out here in this terrible place. We're going to die. It's awful. Well, it looked pretty tough. Sea is before him. And you remember that God parts the waters. There was no way that Moses could get across. But God made a difference. Amen? Amen. Amen. Daniel in the lion's den. Mm -mm. You realize the lions were the very first one to participate in the Daniel fast. <laughs> He's in the lion's den. Now those lions are hungry. They would eat anybody else that was in there. There was no way that Daniel could come out of that lion's den alive. But God. But God made a difference. Amen? <laughs> David and Goliath. <laughs> This sucker is so tall, he cast a shadow that we can cover David in. And yet, David comes to him. You come to me with a spear, a sword, a shield. I come in the name of the Lord. And boom! There was no way David could deal with Goliath. But God was with him. I don't know what you're dealing with. Maybe you can't feel like you can handle it yourself. But God's going to bring you through what about, about Noah? I love Noah, don't you? How many of you have been to the ark? Have you been to the ark? Yeah, is it great or what? Wow. Joy and I went there, and she, when she went in, she saw those big doors, and she burst into tears. Just thinking about all that Noah did and how God used him. But you know, we, the, 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 the ark thing is so, so interesting. And uh, here Noah works all these years. People think he's crazy. And some scholars say he worked 70 years. Some said it was over 100. But anyway, he worked a long, long time building this boat. And there was no water anywhere. That's pretty interesting. So he builds this boat. And now, the animals start coming on two by two. Oh, well, what happens? What happens? Something to be there. Hey, you over there. Hey, you over there. I think I, I love that. That'd be great. So there he was. And the animals come on board. And then the water starts to rise. And for the first time, man gets to float in a boat. <laughs> this is great. I love this serving God I can hear Noah say. Everybody else walks where they go, not me, man. I get to ride in the boat. It's great being in a miracle. Wonderful. 24 hours later, I can see Noah going, whoa. Oh, Lord, this is not as fun as I thought it would be. And Lord, I thought it was great when the animals came on board. This is a stinking dirty place here, Lord. Oh, I'm, I'm saying to you that I think Noah felt like, where is God? Everybody's being wiped out. All the other animals that are on the earth are being wiped out. Everything's covered with water. I, I'm sure it crossed his mind. Well, where is God? And folks, if God was going to watch anybody, he'd watch Noah and his crowd. Isn't that right? Nobody else to watch. Hello? And look what it says in uh, Genesis 8.1. Genesis 8.1. But God remembered Noah. <laughs> but God remembered Noah. Put your name in there. God remembers you, Susie, Marcia, Tom, Bill, whoever you are. God remembers you. I, I love what it says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. A verse that you memorize in Sunday school. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lead unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him. And He'll direct your paths or make your path straight. What does acknowledge mean? It means you recognize the authority. I acknowledge Him. I'm not my own authority. Other people are not my authority. You, God, are my authority. <laughs> Point number one. You are where you are on purpose. 
Point number two, you can depend on God to guide you. Third and final point, you can always be victorious. Yeah. I like to win, don't you? Yeah. I, I, when I'm playing a game, I'm a, if I'm playing ping pong, I want to win. If I'm playing table shovel board, how many of you know what table shovel board is? Anybody know? Yeah, I have one in my house. It's this high, 12 feet long, weighs 600 pounds. I mean, I love, when I'm playing, I want to win. People say you can learn, learn from what you lose. But let me tell you, you know what a loser is? A loser is a loser. I don't want to be a loser. I know you can win from what we lose. I, I know that. But in this business of serving God and making it through to heaven, we're on the winning side. That's where you can always be victorious, not just in heaven, but He can give you victory and power right here. Now, don't miss this. Genesis 50 20. Joseph's talking to your brother, his brothers now. We've gone through 13 chapters to get to this point. He, he's talking to his brothers. Genesis 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God met it for good. Satan means to harm all of us. But God can take even some of those plans from the evil one. And he can do something good. Satan used Joseph's brothers. Satan used uh, Potiphar's wife. He used the famine. He used all kinds of things to destroy and discourage this man. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ. Now think about it. If you are always in triumphal procession in Jesus Christ, how often are you not in triumphal victory? And the Bible says, He leads us always. He always leads us. So wherever you're going, it's leading to victory. It's leading to hope. It's leading to help. What you have to do, what I have to do, we have to hold on. Never give up. Make up your mind. You will never, ever give up. I, I don't know what you're facing today. But I know that whatever it is, God can work in it for good if you love Him. I, I don't see anything good in this, Brother Wise Heart. Well, we don't do it because of what we see. We do it because of what we believe. We walk by it faith and not by but we, are to, we tend to walk by sight don't we? well what they did what they said forget it keep looking higher keep looking higher I, I, I want you to think about your problems we've been talking about Joseph you may be here today we pray for some people physically here and we should do that we believe in a healing God don't we how many of you have been healed physically healed look at that hands all over we anticipate God's healing in others as well it's not easy to go through these kind of times. You're physically down. And, 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 and the report may not be good. I was in the hospital for 70 days. And I was pastoring in and out this first church. I had an infection. It took them 70 days to get it out of me. In the middle of that time, I began to thank God for allowing this problem in my life. I couldn't make it on my own. But God used it. Joe and I were both in the hospital a year ago with COVID. I was in a week, she was in a month. Joy had learned to talk again, she had learned to walk again. A lot of things. In the middle of it, in the hospital, in that bed, I said, God, I thank you for letting me get COVID. I know you're going to use it for good. And I won't go into the details, but I can give you some very specific things that God did for good in my life as a result of COVID. What are you facing physically? And you can't handle yourself. But God can take you through. Amen? Now, I don't know about over here in Indiana, but over in Michigan, our gas prices are real high. Is that way in Indiana? Yeah, yeah. Four, five plus dollars. I filled up my car uh, the other day and had a couple of tanks on the And the pump stopped at $100. I, I was told later that, that the pumps do that automatically. I didn't know that. 
that you know, your one card, it goes up to 100 and it stops. Now you can get more, you can put it in. And you might done. Well, I'm, well, I'm just doing two and I'm going to let it up. <laughs> Finances are a problem. People are losing savings and they wonder how they're going to buy their groceries. How they're going to take care of their responsibilities. No way for us to figure this out. Even the financial geniuses cannot figure it out. But God can. But God can. He knows what's going on. He knows what to do. What about your future? You know what's going to be happening next week, next year? I, I try to live with kind of a loose grip. I don't try to hold on to anything except Jesus. Because I'm finding that sometimes things I'm holding on to, it crumbles. What if I was trusting in that thing? That's why you've got to be careful about a person. Some people put their whole confidence in a person, a man or a woman. And I know we can have influence. I understand that. But I, and we must be careful. I know people who have been almost destroyed because a person failed them, didn't come through. They were supposed to be their best friend, et cetera, et cetera. But you can't look at that. We must look higher. Our future is in peril and question, but God is going to help us. What about your children? Are you working for your children? They're doing things you don't want them to do. You train them differently. You want to see something different in their life. No way you can force them. You can't repair it now. But God can make a difference. <laughs> How about your spouse? I come from an unsaved home. My dad was alcoholic. I lived in terrible tension as a child. My mom found the Lord when I was 16. She lived under all that pressure. There's no way that she could make it to that marriage. But God, they were married. 50 years. He was an alcoholic. 50 years. But God was with her. What about parents that are older? You wonder what you're going to do with your parents. How's it going to all work out? What do you do? I don't know. But God knows. You believe that? Hello, do you believe God knows? Amen. Mike Davison. My friend that died from this multiple systems atrophy. I want you to sing in the midst of it all. I found hope that will never let me fall. Jesus heard my call, my knees to tall, and in him I stand complete, white in the midst of it all. Folks, if you don't stand complete in the midst of it all, you're not going to stand complete because we're all in the midst of it all. Your midst may be different than somebody else's midst, but you're in the midst. <laughs> and he's with you in the storm. He's with you to bring you through. He's going to help you. You'll be glad you held on. Acts 7-9. Acts 7-9. Joseph was sold into Egypt. But God was with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're facing. You may be facing a physical thing that you can't figure it out. Something you've prayed about many, many times. You've read scriptures. You've prayed scriptures. I don't know, preacher, how it's going to work out. But God does. My financial situation is a big question mark. I can't figure out how these things are going to happen. But God knows. My relationship with my family, my children, my neighbors, even people at church, there's some fractured relationships. I can't work it out. But God can do it. If I was to have a, not a note title for this message, God really does make a difference, I'd call it, but God. <laughs> but God. <laughs> Acts 13, 29 to 30. Look, listen to this. Acts 13, 29 to 30. Jesus was laid in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. Is that good or what? Jesus in a tomb. But God came through for Jesus. And God is going to come through for you. Whatever you're facing. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows your name. 
He knows where you live. He knows the things you're feeling in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. <laughs> know the name given among men whereby we must be saved. But the strong name of Jesus. I'm not totally through yet. I'm almost through. Let's go ahead and sing about that name right now. Lost are saved.
I, I know you're a God who can make a difference. I know I have things in my life that I can't handle, it, but God can. But is there anything you want to talk to me about my prayer life, your word? And how often do I think about you, God? Do I ever witness for you? Oh, speak, Lord Jesus. Speak, Lord Jesus. We give you praise and glory. We're going to sing that chorus part one more time. Let's sing it. Jesus. Sing it. Everybody said, Amen. God bless you, you are dismissed.